The Odera AO1s are a rather unique pair of active noise cancelling over-air headphones. They're definitely premium at a cool £200, but they've got a one very well, unique feature, a built-in hearing test. Now you're probably thinking that that's some sort of gimmick, right? And I, if I'm honest, kind of thought so too when I got the email you know, asking if I wanted to review them, but after having a play with them, I'm actually genuinely impressed. Now, to make sure that this wasn't a gimmick where at the sort of 0% personalization scale, they just nerf the equalizer and then, you know, as you go back up the scale, personalizing your headphones, they just, you know, reverse the changes that they've made. Uh, I actually tested them A-B testing, obviously not blinded, but A-B testing with my blue Lolas, which are equally expensive and actually very brilliant. Now, much to my surprise, with the personalization slider set to 50%, the AO1 sounded, at least subjectively, slightly better than the Blue Lola's. Now this of course is subjective, but I am very, very impressed with the audio quality of this and I'm very impressed with the audio quality that you can get with the personalization slider. Now I'd mentioned that the 100% side of things sounded much too harsh for my ears, at least for the time being, so uh, I'm gonna get used to them on 50% like the app suggests and then kinda go from there, but it seems like 50% is a pretty good sweet spot. So now you know that they're not just a complete gimmick and actually pretty decent, let's talk about the other things that they have going for them. The first thing is connectivity. You've got a 4-pole 3.5mm headphone jack on the bottom of the left ear cup and you've got Bluetooth 4.2 which is actually pretty impressive for its range, not very impressive for its range and means that you can connect to any device you want really. You've also got three absolutely tiny buttons next to the headphone jack which actually work pretty well for track selection, play and pause and that sort of stuff when you can actually press them and you've also got a built-in battery which in eco mode which essentially is Bluetooth and the Odera effect on, uh, you're looking at about 35 hours of usage although in flight mode which is active noise cancelling and uh, the line in rather than Bluetooth, you're looking at up to 65 hours of usage. Since we're talking about the noise cancelling, it's activated by a small toggle switch on the right ear cup and did a brilliant job of cutting out even the white noise that I was blasting from my PC speakers right in front of me, so I expect it to do a pretty good job on flights or general travel. Now, if you're going to be using these for the 65 hours of flying that they can do in a single charge, then you're going to want them to be pretty comfortable. Sadly, the AO1s aren't perfect in this regard. They're not too bad, they're not horrifically uncomfortable, but especially that very thin and very under padded headband, I found to be digging into the top of my head after a you know, reasonable amount of usage. Now the ear cups themselves are pretty nice and they do have a fantastic seal around your ears which do a good job of cutting out noise anyway without active noise cancelling on and the clamping force isn't too hard either although they do stay on your head pretty well. Moving on to the software side of things, of course this is the kind of main selling point that these headphones have. The profile that you create is actually stored on the headphones and is all operated through the headphones not through the app so technically speaking as long as you do the hearing test once through the app and set them up you can then if effectively delete it if you don't want to do the hearing test again or add any extra users. Now actually setting up the app is a bit of a pain, you've got to create an account with them, you can't just do a guest mode or whatever else, you have to create an account which is a bit of an annoyance and you have to provide them with location data which I don't really understand why that's the case and they fully lock you out of using the app if you don't provide them that data so uh, they say that that's for helping find your headphones but it's a bit of a, a weird thing that you can't turn that off. Now with that said the actual hearing test itself has three different modes. You've got the standard mode which is eight points that you're going to be tested against, uh, it's the high detail mode which is 16 or the ultimate precision mode which is the one I did which is 32 points. Not quite sure why someone who would spend £200 on a set of headphones specifically for this feature I would assume would go for the quickest test possible but either way if you're in a rush or whatever else and you want to just set it up for someone else and give them a taste of, of what you have <laughs> at your disposal then that is an option. And the hearing test itself is actually pretty simple, it's just a series of tones which you press up or down to say either louder or quieter to work out what the lowest threshold for that frequency is and then you move on to the next one, you do that for both ears independently and then it generates an equalizer profile that it applies to the headphones so that any you know audio that comes through gets run through that equalizer so that your ears hear it as best as possible. So are these rather premium and rather unique sets of headphones actually worth their price tag? Well, it's definitely a subjective thing to say and for me personally, I would say so. 
I probably have a bit too much hearing loss for a 20 something year old, but the overall, at least subjective and perceived audio quality was almost on top of basically anything I have in house and I'm overall very impressed. The build quality is alright, although there is a bit of a kind of rattling coming from the ratcheting mechanism and overall it's uh, still a rather nice set of headphones, it does come with a nice carrying case and some accessories too, so generally speaking, at least from my experience with them, I am fairly happy to recommend them. Now with that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this something that you still think is just a gimmick or is it, you know, something you're really interested in or are there a set of headphones that you would recommend over these for this sort of price points? I would love to hear all of that in the comments down below. If you do want to pick these up, I'll leave a link to them in the description down below where you can check them out. And I'll probably leave a link to their website as well so you can check out more information about them specifically. Otherwise, that is kind of it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative. If you did, then feel free to hit that subscribe button for more videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you want to support the channel, then there are a whole load of links down in the description. You can pick up merch for like hoodies and t-shirts like this one, or a few other designs, including non tech to maybe related ones. And there's also a load of other stuff like Amazon and Overclock, which are affiliate links, which don't cost you anything, but massively help me out when you do use them. You can also check out the Patreon link if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so, or the private internet access, which is a great GPPN, or even Humble Bundle, which is a great way to get cheap games and support charities too. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. You can check out some other videos over there. You can check out the Blue Lola headphones review in the cards up above. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.